Oh, well, I, uh, you know, I'm fully supportive of the recreational proposal the staff have put forward. Um, I'm glad to see that things fit, even if the Snake River return, Snake River Wild came at the next uh, tier down. Um, as I said at the last hearing, right, Oregon's rules allow these tangle nets uh, post run update and that there's a narrow window that they work. I think that that window has closed. Uh, we haven't had an opener this late. There's been over 100,000 shad over the dam, uh, over Bonneville in the last three days. We don't have a way to estimate steelhead or shad handle other than a qualitative sort of guess that there will be plenty of handle available. I just, I don't, I don't feel comfortable setting a mainstream tangle net opener. I don't think that this tool is the right tool for this time right now, and I don't have another tool available for a mainstream opener under Oregon rule at this time. So I cannot support a commercial proposal put forward by staff at this time. Uh, I can support the staff recommendation for the recreational proposal. So I think in the last time we were in this place, <clears throat> um, we went ahead and did TNET test fishing into June, you know, to assess some of these questions that we had. And I'm curious if staff have, you know, we were in sort of a very similar, I think, with the shad um, and at that time sockeye. And right now we've only had four sockeye over Bonneville and we've got plenty of sockeye space. So um, this isn't exactly like 2022, but uh, we did we we did that so that we could inform these management decisions when we found ourselves potentially here again. So um, I'm interested in hearing from staff um, when we did have the TNET test fishery occur, I think it was June 2nd in 2022, sort of what that yielded uh, in terms of, of other species of fish, you know, handled. Charlene Tucker, this is Ryan. Um, I think in 2022, we ran the test fishery through, let's see, we fished May 29th, 31st, and June 9th. Um, and that is on our website. And we handled uh, in eight drifts, um, 882 shad, 1.8 schnook per drift, um, 0.1 steelhead per drift. Uh, on the first, on the May 29th, 31st, June 9th was 69 total shad on, looks like three drifts at, and 2.3 shnook per drift and zero steelhead were handled. And then I think there were seven sockeye handled. That was the only time in our test fishery we've ever, ever encountered sockeye. Um, last year we fished June 4th and the 7th, um, both relative, you know, three and five drifts, respectfully. Um, and I think the first over period that we fished, 432 total shad and 64 shad and, and, and no sockeye. And this year, you know, we just fished uh, yesterday, um, five drifts, um, 63, and I misquoted, our fact sheet was incorrect. It wasn't 63 shad per drift. It was total of 63 shad. So that's like 13 shad per drift, if you want to. Uh, update the fact sheet, um, but had 0.2 Chinook per drift, uh, 0.2 uh, steelhead per drift. Um, so uh, we have test fished into late May and early June, and I think our staff's expectations are uh, recommendations would, you know, were aligned with 
the test the test fishing results don't uh, probably uh, were informative for us in planning our staff recommendations. We didn't have any um, outlying concerns on what we've seen in the past. I think I can stop there and maybe see if Jeff has anything else to add from TNET research, uh, test fishing research uh, data we've collected. No, I don't have anything to add, Brian. Yeah, and I appreciate um, the detailed dis accounting there, Ryan, of the data. I mean, I feel a little bit like this is a catch-22. Um, you know, if you don't sort of allow people to go fishing and collect this data in what I consider to be a fairly regulated, controlled manner, um, then, then yeah, the questions keep coming back to the same place. Right, and and the USU Oregon Management degree agreement defines the spring period um, up until June fifteenth. So, you know, I recognize like here in Washington, our policy, our commission policy, does allow for consideration of um, large mesh gillnet. Um, it it does, frankly, throughout the entire spring season. And uh, I acknowledge, you know, Tucker, you're in a bit of a box there because the Oregon rules do not. Um, That's correct. The Oregon rules do not allow that. But I just, I, I guess with, with all of the tools at our disposal uh, in terms of being able to resend openers um, and things, I'm just, I don't share the conservation concerns um, for a fishery for, a, you know, setting a, two more periods for a commercial fishery. Um, and I mean, reminding people that shad, although they're not the target of this fishery, they are allowable sales, right? Shad can be kept and can be sold. Um, and in fact, I think from some of our fishers who testified that that did occur. So that is value added to this fishery. So I'll be, you know, I think we're in, sounds like we're in different spots on this. Can't say that I'm not disappointed. Um, I don't, I, you know, maybe two is too much for now. I'm looking to see if you're interested in setting an additional opener for tomorrow for commercial. No, I'm not at this time. Okay, well. I guess, um, I mean, there's not much more I can probably say on this one, but uh, acknowledging that we are in very different places. Um, yeah, I acknowledge that, you know, we have different rules and different policies and we are in different places. Um, you know, it's a narrow window. I support these openers when they fit within that window. Uh, I do agree that shad are allowable sales and they are not necessarily bycatch, right? They can be sold, but they do impact the fishery, right? As we heard from one of the advisors, that they can impact the other catch that does occur. So, and that is incumbent upon the fisher, but sometimes those things are out of the control of the fisher and they can impact the survival of the other fish within the net. So. Yeah, I think you know, moving forward into the into the future too, and and maybe for a bit more context for this year. I mean, I'm I'm interested to understand what the end date of this narrow window is. I mean, we still we are still in May, you know. Um, so, you know, if you've got some context to add on that, or some sort of metric that you're looking for um, in terms of fish passage at Bonneville, I'd like to understand it. Yeah, I mean, I think that that is a, a good question. Um, I, I can tell you right now that shad passage at Bonneville is the highest it's been uh, to date since 2014. Right, so it, it's a it's a tricky thing, um, and I don't know that it's necessarily a, a specific calendar date. Um, so.
but it's a variety of factors, certainly. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you've heard uh, the Washington position on this. We definitely would support, you know, the, the two openers as proposed by staff here. Um, sounds like Oregon doesn't support those. Um, so if we, you know, unless we have further commenting on that, um, I can make a motion on the recreational fishery. All right, I will be willing to hear that for sure. Um, so with that, I move that the states adopt regulations that are consistent with the staff recommendation <clears throat> for the 2024 main stem Columbia River Spring Chinook Recreational Fishery downstream of Bonneville Dam. The season is Saturday, June 1st through Tuesday, June 11th for 11 days. The area is Tongue Point slash Rocky Point line upstream to Beacon Rock Boat and Bank, plus bank angling only from Beacon Rock upstream to the Bonneville Dam deadline. Legal upstream boat boundary defined as a deadline mark around the Oregon Bank, approximately four miles downstream from Bonneville Dam Powerhouse 1, in a straight line through the western tip of Pierce Island to a deadline marker on the Washington Bank at Beacon Rock. The daily bag limit is two adult hatchery salmonids, Chinook or steelhead, per day, but only one may be a Chinook. And all previously adopted regulations, including permanent regulations, remain in effect. And I second that motion. Thanks. All right, there are no additional compact or joint state hearings that are scheduled at this time. Uh, as always, staff will monitor fisheries uh, and, re uh, and recommend additional hearings um, as they are warranted. I'd like to thank everyone for their interest and in attendance and passion for the resource. Um, thank you all. The compact and joint state hearing is adjourned.